Okay. Let's see if it's good. Damn, that's crazy. So it worked when you. This Change this up real quick. Get that color is cool. All right, I am in six nine zero. All right, I had to drop the uh, password for him. All right, cool. And App Original TV, um, shoot, if we get any engagement, we got some links that uh, the viewers can kind of follow along. We just gonna drop them in the chat. And then if um that way you can kind of drop them in the uh in the actual live chat for YouTube. Okay. I just uh, put them in the um group chat. Okay, perfect. Okay, where is that at? Because y'all know I don't know what I'm doing over here. It's a group chat. Where that where I find the group chat? Under the chat on the bottom row of the Zoom meeting where it says participants and then chat. I don't see that. Mm -hmm. Oh damn! I need. She made look different on your end. Let me see. Let me see. Are you on your uh phone? Or... Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Hold on, I see it. And she really once you um connect with the YouTube, you can make either myself or Chief Quietwater the host, and then we can pretty much share screen and do all that stuff in here. All right. So. All right. Hold on. Give me one second. Let me share this to my. Um... Or he can just click share screen and just hit multiple people. Multiple people. He can't, he can't make you host. He could just say multiple people can share. Okay. So where what I need to do to do that? Uh, you see where it says share screen, the green button. Yep. Click on that, and then a little box will pop up, and then just select multiple people can uh, oh, share okay. this. I got you. I see it right here. Okay, cool. And what's the name of your um, backup page? Uh, Geechee God TV. I'll actually send y'all a link so that y'all can, because it might be hard to find, because it ain't got that many subs. So, and I know how they act when you ain't got that many subs. Oh, yeah. They put you in the shadow realm. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna send that to what do I put that in the chat here? Okay, right, let me see. yeah, you put that in the chat. All right, let's see. Share, copy. Uh, okay, face. I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta. Do everything on my phone, then I gotta do it on my computer. So I gotta do everything twice. Um, 
Let me see. Okay, here's the link. Okay, boom. I go here to the chat. I paste the link. Okay, so that's the channel right there, y'all. Okay. Sure I'm share that out. And like I was telling him, um, as y'all get started, I will do an intro, bro. I ain't gonna just throw y'all out there. Gotcha. Um, but as uh y'all get started, I'll be going and uh, sharing on my social medias and trying to get some more people here and letting them know because I don't go live on here often. Gotcha. Um, anything y'all need from me before we get started? Oh, uh, I think we all good. Let me make sure we got. Yep, we able to share and everything, so we good to go. Yo, Gucci. All right, cool. So I'm going to start the live and then I'll give a little synopsis. Do y'all want to do intros or do y'all want to go straight into it? Yeah, we'll introduce ourselves that way. Okay, we'll cool. Let's get that familiarity. All right, bet. All right, so let me set it. Okay, I, uh, let's see. Hold on. So I click here, then click here. Yeah, I had to uh, connect this to my Geechee God account because I don't have uh because you know you gotta have pro or premium or something to go live. So I only had that mm -hmm. on one account. So I wasn't sure if we was gonna be able to do it, but I think we are. The greatest story ever told, right? Mm -hmm. Greatest story, uh yeah, never told. Never told, okay. Mm -hmm. Story. All right, once I hit the live, it's going to, y'all know how Zoom works. Yep. Um, and then we'll get it in. All right. Let's see. Get it. <clears throat> Are we going to be able to post it on our page as well so people can click on the link from our community post page? The link I gave you? Uh, I was asking them. Oh, uh, okay. You should be able to. Like for the community post. So that way they could click on it and, and join. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to post that link on that uh, community post. Okay. I think we live, gang. Let me see. It's taking a second. Well, so people can click on the link from our community post page. Uh, the link I gave you. Okay. Yeah. We live, uh, y'all. I was asking them. Oh. Shout out to all the American Aborigines. Chief Ethers in the building. Aboriginal TV is in the building. The God of the Geeches is in the building. I got a special treat for y'all today, man. Got a very special treat for y'all. Let me get back to my screen real quick. I got a very special guest. They they hit me up. They said they got some heat to drop for the family. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, um, and then I'm gonna let y'all take off. If y'all need me, y'all let me know. Shout out to Chief Biko, Chief Quietwater, and Chief Alligator. They here to drop some of that heat. Um, make sure y'all share this video out. Hit that like button as you come in the door. And I'm going to let my brothers and sisters take over, man. What's up, Chief? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. First and foremost, man, thank you again for providing the opportunity for us to jump on your platform. Like you said, we just here to educate the people educate the masses. So definitely shout out to you, Chief Ether. Um, I'll introduce myself. I go by Chief Biko. Uh, family from South Carolina uh, was able to trace us back to the Eno Shikari as well as the Westo Americans. Um, they were pretty much introduced or came together with the Cherokee after, of course, a lot of battles and things of that nature. So my family is Cherokee American. Um, I'll pass it off to Chief Quietwater. Hey, good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Ether, for allowing us to be on your platform. So myself, too, was able to I'm Chief Quietwater. And um, like you said, I was able to trace my um, family back to the Alabama and Tennessee um, regions and um, my mother's side, Choctaw, father's side, Cherokee. So we are definitely from this land. I'm Chief Alligator. Uh, I was able to uh, chase my mother's bloodline back to the estate known as Georgia, the 13th colony, Terry Buffer State, when it was created. Uh, my mother's side of the family, Cherokee. On my father's side, we go back to Savannah. Um, not sure on the tribe exactly on my father's side. Uh, and I just want to throw this note out there. If you cannot trace one side of your family's bloodline, 
by paperwork understand that we have been being warred against. So when towns get flooded, towns get burned, sometimes that will stop you short. Don't feel like other people are better than you because they can go back to the 1700s, 1600s. Remember, these Europeans were destroying a lot of the uh, towns and cities that we lived in. Excellent point. All right, man. Y'all ready to take off? Y'all ready for y'all presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's see. do it, man. I'm going to pin the link that y'all posted in the back. I'm going to try to pin that to the uh, chat okay. so that they'll have a reference as y'all speaking. And if y'all need me, y'all know where to find me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, Chief. Well, shoot, I'll jump off the porch with it. Again, myself, uh, go by Chief Biko. And, you know, pretty much back background of our our channel we just here to, to uplift our people like i said uh pretty much our group suffers from low self-esteem um we get told who we are by you know this this brainwashing uh camps that we call schools you know to tell you you're african you came over here as slaves things of that nature but what our channels and our purpose is for is just to uplift our people um like i said we suffer from low self-esteem man we we think you know they, uh, we get that told that slave narrative, which is a lie all the time. Um, if we really want to go into it, which we will today, the European is the slave. They was the ones coming over here as indentured servants, coming over here as exiled um, religious people, uh, coming over here as debtors. You know, Georgia was uh, created as a military buffer state with nothing but uh, debtors from their prisons in uh, England. So we have to understand that. And that's why we say, yeah, you got to know who you are. First, first and foremost, have to trace back your family, ask your grandparents if you have them alive. Hey, do we have any Indian blood in us? You gotta say Indian because that's all they remember. We know it's American, but again, we have to use these terms that they were uh, being told and stuff like that uh, in the beginning. So again, we come from a long line of inventors. We created all of these industries that this government uh, creates its wealth off of and creates its resources whether it be transportation, uh, transportating food with a, a refrigerating system, uh, whether it be stoplights, whether it be dropping off your mail in the mailbox. We created all of this stuff. So that's what we're here for, to just make sure that we can um, show that to the viewer. That way we say, hey, we take pride in where we're from. Like you said, everybody on this channel just dropped you know, where they come from. So we have to take pride in that. So without further ado, if Chief Quiet Water, you don't mind, we're going to jump into exactly who these exiled people were that first jumped on this land. Uh, we're going to do that by showing you exactly what they did. Uh, they came on this land, y'all, first and foremost, as I'm just looking through my talking points, they came on this land as, again, exiled people. Um, we were the Americans. We were messing them up. So the first document we're going to show would be the 1755 Militia Act. You want me to show that, right? Yes, yes. Please. Okay, I'm trying to pull it up now. Hold on just a minute. And so just to give a little background, because we're not going to jump through the whole thing, uh, but we will provide proof of claim. So we're going to drop the links uh, for you as well. But this uh, Militia Act was basically for these Europeans to say, you know what? We need to organize ourselves to make sure that we can protect ourselves against the American. Because of course, if anybody's walking up on your land, walking up on your property as the American, you're going to check them. You say, what y'all doing? Y'all stealing our stuff, y'all stealing our resources, raping our women, things of that nature. So as the European is doing that and we whooping their ass, they're like, hold up, we got to make sure that we organize and create our own uh, militia pretty much. So let me see here. Hold on. Just a moment. Sorry about that. Are you good? Uh. One second. So again, just this militia act that we're going to show is from 1755. So make sure you note that 1755, we're saying uh, we know through, again, these military brainwashing camps called schools that this government was established in 1776. So again, this is 
uh, 21 years prior to the establishment of this government, but you can already see the organization that's being taken place. You can already see the military occupation that will be uh, getting underneath, which while we say we are prisoners of war. Because as, you, uh, as you'll see, as we'll go ahead and walk you through, there was a lot of unlawful war being had against our people. So as Chief Quietwater just pulled up, if you could, Chief Quietwater, highlight that first sentence in the second paragraph as fears. So again, we have to always read between the lies, not the lines, but the lies. So it says here, as fears of Indian attacks increased, pressure on assembly grew until Wednesday, November 19th, by the leave of the House of Benjamin Franklin, uh, a member of the House bought in a bill and tooled an act for the better ordering and regulating the mil military force uh, of this province. So again, as fears of Indian attacks increase, who is the Indian first and foremost? Because as we already see from this document that they're already trying to steal our identity by calling us something that we're not. We're in America. Where are they getting this term Indian from? So again, we have to look at that and say, okay, as fears of American attacks, because again, they're infiltrating our land, our territories, and now we have to make sure that we uh, combat that. So again, as fears of Indian attacks increased, presses on the assembly began to grow for protection. So what I would say is, as the viewer, if these foreign invaders knew that, hey, the only way we can survive is by organizing, is by actually arming ourselves, why don't we reverse engineer that and do the same? Again, we come from this land. We are being constantly uh, killed on camera, constantly uh, beaten, constantly uh, being stripped down in the public eye, whether it be your, your favorite athlete, your favorite entertainer, constantly being made to apologize for things that we know is the truth. So again, why aren't we able or why aren't we so willing to organize ourselves and arm up as well. I'm about to say, did you want to hop in on that there, Chief uh, Quiet Water, just in regards to anything there? Definitely on board, um, on board with you with everything that you said. I'm I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure some technical things out. So I kind of tapped out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. But again, this is just the first uh, first document we're going to show in regards to how they set up their military. This is the militia. This is the ground floor. So when we think of militia, you think of you know police officers. Uh, you think of retired military. The same individuals who were a part of the community then are still a part of these militias today. Uh, if you recognize something in you know, January 6th, yeah, militia storming those capitals, oath keepers, things of that nature. So again, this is something that they implemented in the very ground, really before they even set up this government and it's still actually implemented today. Uh, so that's just one, the first very step of this military occupation that we'll be showing you all today. Shoot, if you could, that's going to lead us straight into who these actual people are. Who are these, you know, we the people, framers of the constitution, things of that nature. So if Chief uh, Quietwater scrolls down, if you could highlight that picture on the right-hand side, signing of the Constitution. So these individuals here is what would be known as the we the people. So if we're seeing these, these individuals here on the right-hand side, none of them look like anybody on this channel because they're not any of our uh, ancestors. So this whole government, this whole system was built for people that look exactly like them. So when we say, you know, our forefathers, our founding fathers, you're really disrespecting your ancestors because again, nobody in this picture looks like your forefathers, your ancestors. So why do we say as a group, you know, we the people, you know, the constitution is for us. And we'll show you, hey, we still trying to find an entry point for the actual American. So all of these people pictured in this video, uh, in this actual photo, again, these are the we the people. And when they say we the people, they're talking about the people within this room. It was only 39 people that actually signed this constitution. So those 39 people will be considered the we the people. So as we go I through- always, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, I always like to highlight the fact that it wasn't 
a lot of people, you know, to make the changes that they did. There wasn't a lot of people. And we we're always including ourselves in the we the people, but just throwing it in people's face, these are the people right here. And they're descendants of these people, not us. Correct. Correct. Excellent point. And like you said, it's not a lot of people. So even going back to the last document, the 1755 Militia Act, if they can take 39 regular smegler people, again, these are people that was exiled from Europe. These aren't any type of high esteem individuals. They can take 39 people and say, you know what? We're going to separate from this system, this government, which was in their case, England, and create our own establishment. That way we can actually prosper. That way we won't have to stay at a peasantry level. Because again, they had class systems. If you was a peasant, you were born into peasantry, then you're going to stay a peasant. So why are we, we should be having that same mentality saying, you know what? We have a group of uh, individuals like-minded. Let's write up our own constitution, get organized. So even though, again, these are the people that we was fighting against, our enemies, there's always stuff to learn, always things to to learn and actually implement for ourselves because all of that, all they practice in us is self-preservation. Self-preservation is key. So if you could, Chief Quiet Water, drop in the We the People that should pull up the Constitution. Uh, so again, as I stated earlier, uh, a whole lot of unlawful wars is being had on us. Um, as we go ahead and read through this Constitution, I'm going to show you exactly who has the power to declare War One. What is the supreme law of the land? And that too, there is no money. So once we get that pulled up, we'll go ahead and walk you through that as well. Chief uh, Alligator, did you have any thoughts in regards to what we uh, kind of went over thus far? Uh, my only point on the Militia Act would be when you think about the Second Amendment that a lot of people who look like us like to hold on to and say we have the right to bear arms, when you really understand who established the militia, which was the European to protect themselves from the Americans that were attacking them, then you have to really wrap your mind around who really does have the right to bear arms. And it's the actual militia, which is comprised of Europeans. As for the 39 people that signed the uh, constitution, uh, shout out to the business owners of that group. Uh, they were exiled from Europe. They had to figure out a way how to survive on foreign land. And uh, they have since that time created a, a, a military industrial complex that now runs the world. Uh, we in turn have the same gripes that they had against England that we now have against the United States government. It really boils down to who's gonna put their nuts on the table, who's gonna stand up and who's gonna go back to a Confederacy form of government, which is an American form of government. Um, hopefully we'll tap into that tonight. Excellent point. Excellent point. And that's going to pretty much segue us exactly into what we're um, showing here. This is the Constitution. Um, just be quite frank, a lot of folks don't know exactly what's in this Constitution. And since we don't know that, then we don't know the laws and regulations on this land, because they pretty much contradict themselves in everything that they do. The first contradiction and really the biggest one, if you scroll down to Section 10, Chief Quietwater, is the money. There is no money. And I'm going to show you exactly why we say that. So here, this first paragraph says, no state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation. Chief Alligator just said, confederation, that is our pretty much a uh, form of government. That is an American form of government. So why would they say no state shall enter into any confederation, which is an American form of government? Because they know that the Americans actually had confederacies. You got the Iroquois Confederacy the uh, Crete Muscogee Confederacy. So again, when we listen to these terms and they say, you know, the Confederates uh, had slaves, they, the Confederates uh, was warned against the Union, those were fake Confederacies because we're seeing in this document right here in their foundational document, they're saying that no state shall have or shall enter into any treaty, alliance or confederation. So that's a contradiction and a, a, a lie in itself. So why do we get told, you know, the Confederates were warned against the Union when their foundational document says that they could never make a confederation? Um, as we keep reading, we'll also see here, they shall not be able to grant letters of marquee and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and payment of debts. So only gold and silver, which uh, Chief Alligator is showing, is actually 
consider tender or money that will actually be used or could actually be used to pay off debt. So I have to ask the viewer a question. Let us know, hey, has have anybody been paid gold or silver after working their nine to five, 40 hour week? I know personally I haven't. So again, they're one contradicting themselves in the narrative, AKA lie that they like to reconstruct with this silver war, which we'll break down as well, it wasn't a war. We'll show you exactly who has the power to declare war. And two, they're lying about the money. It says here, gold and silver is the only thing that can pay off debts. So when we're using this fiat currency, this dollar bill, this, this credit to pay off quote unquote debts, are you actually paying them off? Because here in this foundational document, again, it says the only thing that's used for payment of debts will be gold and silver. Just something to think about people. Chief Quiet Water, if you could scroll up to section eight, would love to show the viewers exactly why I said there was no civil war. So in section eight is basically explaining that Congress had the power to do all of these things listed below. But I'm gonna jump down to where it says, uh, should be to declare war. Let me know if you see that. I see it there. Perfect, perfect. So Congress shall have the power to declare war, grant letters and mark key and repressal, and make rules concerning captures on land and water. That is going to be very key as we go ahead and show the unlawful war that's been uh, being waged on us since the 1800s all the way to now. So what that means is basically that if Congress did not declare war, then it is not a actual war. It is not lawful. They cannot capture our land and our water. What do we know in the in, uh, Indian Removal Act? They captured our land, our waters, the surrounding water that's surrounding the land and moved us to, uh, moved a lot of our family to the territory now known as Oklahoma. But we're gonna see that, hey, you will never be able to find a document declaring war, declaring the Seminole War, declaring the Civil War. You won't see those. So now you're getting the picture. All of this shit is unlawful. All of this shit is fake that they've been having us underneath. And the only way that they can actually do that is through the military. And last but not least, before we jump into some actual treaties that actually highlight this point, if you could, Chief Quiet Water, scroll down to Article 6 for me. And for the viewer, basically what Article 6 is going to show show you which I'm going to read in that second paragraph is that the treaty is the supreme law of the land. So what it reads here is this constitution, the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and any judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything to the contrary notwithstanding. So it's clearly saying here that the treaty is the supreme law of the land. So if there's a treaty governing our resources that should be given to us, our land, that is supposed to be the supreme law of the land. But also if we continue to read, this has to be under the authority of the United States. So make sure you all, you know, put that feather in your cap as we continue to move through this, uh, through this timeline here, because you're gonna see a lot of unlawful treaties being had. Chief Biko, if you can hammer down on what you just read, these two articles and sections that you talked about, uh, that means we got to challenge people who look like us that are scholars. When they, when they refer us to their books, we have to ask them the question. We don't want to read your book. We want you to show us the actual document. And so the, the treaty is a supreme law of the land. There's nothing higher than a treaty. So don't tell me about your book on such page. No, what treaty? And on the previous article, uh, when you were saying that Congress has the power to declare war, we have to challenge the people that look like us as well. They get on TV and claim there was a civil war. Show us the document that Congress voted to declare a war. If they cannot produce the document, the shit didn't happen. And I think that's the, one of the biggest things we have to get unapologetic about. The day of people standing up in front of us and talking to us from a preacher standpoint, and we just buy everything that they say, those days over with because that's what got us in this predicament in the first place. Show us the proof of claim on what you're saying or sit down and shut the fuck up. Great point. And straight up the middle with it. And that's exactly right. Most of, them, uh, most of the time we'll be lectured to. They'll point out little hints here and there, um, but it won't be exactly what the document says. 
That's why we provide the documents to the viewer. Hey, we're going to walk you through it, but we also want you to go ahead and look at it for yourself because, hey, don't, don't just believe us, believe the document. So that's an excellent point, uh, Chief uh, Alligator. And that's going to segue us into our first treaty. As he just explained, the treaty is what? The supreme law of the land. So as we go here and look at this treaty, which was actually for the Seminole to uh, rope off more land before this actual uh, quote unquote Indian, but we know it's the American Removal Act. So if we see here 1823, and if we scroll down to the very bottom, we're gonna see exactly what we're uh, discussing here. So it says done at camp on Moultrie Creek in the territory of Florida, this 18th day of September, 1823, and of the independence of the United States. So, and of the independence. That reads to me that the, uh, without the consent of the United States, we're still going to validate this treaty, which we just read is unlawful. Because what we just read was that it has to be authorized by the United States, the Supreme Law, a uh, treaty of Supreme Law to land, and it has, shall be authorized by the United States. This here is saying that in the independence of the United States. So regardless of what the fuck Congress, president, judicial system says, we wrote you niggas off. We, go, we about to go ahead and make sure we take your land. Again, where is the uh, Congress document declaring war to even capture our land and water? Where is the ratification of this document? You're not going to find it. So again, that just highlights what Chief Alligator was stating. Don't tell me what happened, show me proof of claim. And that's exactly what we're showing you all right now. You kind of want to build up. And I think it's important to just, you know, the fact that we are showing documents that are official documents from the Library of Congress and, you know, not some book that someone wrote or anything like that. So it's important for people to know that the information is out there. It's not hard to find, but we're just providing, you know, we can't cover it all, but we have definitely been able to chronologically put everything in order for you to follow everything pretty much up to where we are present day and realizing that really not much has changed from then to now. And if you can just highlight William P. Duvall in that first sentence of that bottom paragraph. I can't highlight it. Okay. Uh, if we can back out so maybe they can see it. It's maximized right now. There we go. If if the if the if the readers on this channel can see William P. Duval, understand that that's where Duval County got its name. And also Andrew Jackson was the president at that time. And Andrew Jackson, along with his military, went into these unlawful wars. So William P. Duval is the county. Jacksonville, Florida was named after Andrew Jackson. So you can see how they uh, unlawfully and unconstitutionally were claiming sections of land and then naming counties and cities after themselves. So I just wanted to make that key point for the people following. Duval County in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, Andrew Jackson was the president and one of the military officers was uh, William P. Duval. If this was a lawful treaty, you would see where you would see somebody from the United States government sign this document. It would say Congress, House of Representatives, Senate. You don't see any of that language at the bottom of this treaty. So pay attention to that as well, what we're bringing to the readers or the viewers' attention. Excellent points. Excellent points by both of you chiefs. Um, and this isn't the only treaty, guys. There's hundreds, thousands of treaties just like this. Um, you're going to see the same verbiage at the end. Um, we're actually going to show you another one. Uh, it's going to be actually the Treaty of Moultrie Creek or Payne's Landing, actually. And you're going to see the same verbiage. So we just saw the Treaty of Moultrie Creek, 1823. This is the Treaty of Payne's, uh, Payne's Landing, 1833. Uh, so again, 10 years later, 10 years of unlawful war, 10 years of unlawful uh, killing of our people, unlawful removal of their land. Because again, Congress never declared war. So who's actually given the orders to go ahead and rope off, uh, rope off our people, continue to wage these unlawful laws, unlawful wars rather. So if we look at the very bottom, um, 
may be able to bring up a little bit more, but if not, it'll show at the end. Perfect, perfect. So done at the Camp of Pains Landing on the Akawahawa River in the territory of Florida on this ninth day of May, 1,832, and of the independence of the United States of America. So again, that same verbiage showing again, despite what, despite if we get approval or no approval from the United States, this treaty is still valid. So all of the land that was seceded, all of the resources that were taken, we're still gonna make sure we take them regardless of if our government actually approves of this. So again, again, just highlighting that the, uh, the blatant lies they tell within these documents and how they contradict themselves with their foundational document being the constitution. Because again, the treaty is supposed to be, uh, be the supreme law of the land. Congress is the only one that's supposed to be able to declare war. We're seeing nobody from Congress even signed off or um, ratified this. You're gonna see a lot of our ancestors, our chiefs, as far as marking their names with X, uh, and then a lot of just agents and interpreters, military people. So again, unlawful wars being had on our people since these folks landed in uh, America. And if you can just uh, to bring it to a street level or operations level, this is one of the reasons why you may not be able to track your bloodline back to the early 1800s, because you have to keep in mind, if they're doing unlawful wars, that means that if they burnt your ancestors town down, or they burnt the city down, or they made a lake out of it, we got to understand everybody, everybody that's a part of our group is not going to be able to go back through paperwork to the 16, 17, or early 1800s. And this is one of the reasons why they they never told you you was in a war. And it's, it's the same to this day. Like they never came out and said, we're warring against the quote unquote Afro-American. And that's one of the things that we have to snap out of. How many times they got to swing on you every time it's time to switch classes. If you want to use a high school analogy, right? You keep getting swung on every time you go to a different class, but you waiting on him to tell you it's going to be a fight after school. So that's what the European has been doing to us, fighting us and warring against us without openly saying we're declaring war against them. Excellent point. And it's the same today. You'll see, hell, every three months, we, have, we haven't missed a, a fiscal quarter of one of our people getting killed, getting beat on by whether it's police officers or just random ass Europeans. Um, and then, hey, we sweep it under the rug, we'll get another victim within the next three months. Uh, so again, like he stated, they're not blatantly coming out and say, yeah, we're still, it's still on site with you. You remember them sundown towns? Yeah, that's right. still in effect. We still going, it's on site, but we just ain't going to make it as obvious and we ain't going to put it out there that way you all can say, oh, well, shit, they said it, it's a fight. So now we, we know they're going to protect themselves. No, we're just going to continue to Run up behind you, slap you in the back of your head. You look behind you, ain't nobody there. You know, a little shit like that. So that's a great analogy that you just uh, made with it because that's exactly what's going on today. And that also, you know, just people getting killed, you know, just recently with the Kanye thing and the Kyrie Irving thing, basically them telling you to just shut the hell up. Don't say nothing or, you know, or else basically, you know, and you have people who jump on board with, you know, he should have watched what he said and things like that, but why? You know, so it's the same, same type of the energy. Excellent point. Excellent point. And again, as we're showing these unlawful wars, you know, the biggest one that I think our people, um, and even myself, I can speak for myself, that was having trouble on getting past is like, there wasn't a civil war. What you mean there wasn't a civil war? We got movies about it, got all kind of stuff. But again, hence I said movies, hence I said TV shows, all of this, this uh, programming, we get taught that, hey, this is what it is, but the documents don't show that. So that's going to go ahead and lead us into uh, the Emancipation Proclamation. And what we're going to point out here is that if Lincoln was told to free the Americans, well, first and foremost, let me uh, back up. Who told you that you were the slave? first and foremost, as the viewer. That would be school. That would be them same TV shows, them same movies. Hell, we talk about roots, like that's from our lineage. So 
hell, they even got another movie coming out with uh, Will Smith, Emancipation. So as we're reading these, I want you all as the viewer to say, hey, these folks on to something. Why? Every, every so often they want to say, bring us back to, okay, you were the slave. But again, who was telling you that you were the slave? Hell, Kyrie was right on the mark. Kanye was right on the mark. This Jewish media, um, hell, this, this military brainwashing camps called schools. But if you ask your family members, they're going to say, nah, we got Cherokee in our blood, Choctaw in our blood, Hell Creek, Seminole. So again, we have to be mindful about who we're listening to. And so I bring that up because it says nothing in this document about freeing Africans, Negroes, colored people. Every reclassification term that we've been put underneath, you're not going to find that in this Emancipation Proclamation document. But what you will find is that there was a civil rebellion, not a war, because again, remembering what we talked about earlier, taking that feather out your cap, who has the right to declare war? Congress. So we have a document here from the president of the United States at this time claiming or not stating that it was a war, but an actual rebellion. So I want you all to keep that in mind. So you're not gonna find civil war in this document. You're not gonna find anything regarding African descent, uh, Negroes, colored Blacks. Again, any reclassification term that they tried to put on our group of people, you're not gonna find that. But again, what you will find is that it was a rebellion and not a civil war. And uh, I would like to add on, we have to remember what reconstruction means. If one of us can pull up the definition of reconstruction, that is a very long way of the European saying, I'm lying. Great and point. It's amazing how we just let that reconstruction word roll out and we think that it's actual truth. Uh, if we can pull up the definition of reconstruction. That's great that you pointed out reconstruction area, era two, because that's showing exactly when we're going to make up this lie. So yes. mm -hmm. first point on the definition, the action or process of reconstructing or being reconstructed. That's lying. Hmm. So when we think about this Emancipation Proclamation, think about what we know as segregation. These Europeans were not allowing you to be in their towns. So through the Daughters of Confederacy, which is a nonprofit organization, they were able to raise money and build all these statues, right, to build this lie. So when we integrated with them, you got all these statues in these downtown states in the what was known as the Creek Confederacy. So you thinking these this really happened? It's all a big ass movie stage play. This shit didn't happen according to the documents. Excellent points, excellent points. And you know one of the things that always get taught to us during this whole lie era, because we're not going to use the term reconstruction era, this lie era, the building of this narrative to teach, you know, the children of the warriors that we've been warned against unlawfully. Um, we always get told about this 40 acres and a mule thing, you know, yeah, I need my 40 acres and a mule, you know, the, the Freedmen's Bureau was for us. So again, a lot of our scholars get, you know, they, they sit up on these stages and they lecture to us and tell us, yeah, the Freedmen's Bureau is is, is for our group of people, the American. But we're gonna show you exactly, it shows nothing about, again, Blacks, African descent, colored Negro, any of the terms used at this time uh, to describe us. But it will show rebellion and it will show who actually is supposed to get these uh, this 40 acres. I'm not even sure where they got the mule from. Actually, I believe that might've been special order uh, 15, which will show as well. But as you see here, Chief Quietwater is typing in, you know, Blacks, Africans, uh, again, Negroes, color, you're not going to find it. But what you do see is present war rebellion. So I'm going to go ahead and read off here and show you exactly who this Freedmen's Bureau is applying to. So let me see. I'll start here. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that there is hereby established in the War Department to continue during the War of Rebellion and for one year thereafter, a Bureau for re of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands. We'll stop right there. So refugees, freedmen, and abandoned lands. Refugees and freedmen, okay, two different people, two different groups. 
But again, if you're a refugee of this quote unquote Confederate state, that means that you would have to been, have been a citizen of these Southern states. That wasn't us. If we're going along with this slave narrative, how can a slave be a citizen? So you're not a refugee. So let's look into who these freedmen uh, are that they're saying here. So to which shall be committed as here and after provided the supervision and management of all abandoned lands and the control of all subjects relating to refugees and freedmen from rebel states. So bam, they're telling you exactly who these people are. Refugees and freedmen from rebel states. Nothing about blacks, Negroes, colored, African descent. They're saying that this applies to the European who seceded from their government, tried to create or be a part of our government, which is a confederacy. And now they're calling them out saying, okay, you, 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 you want to do this? We, we ain't going to fuck you over too bad. We'll still give you a little something. We'll give you 40 acres. Uh, after this war, because those are still their people. So we got refugees and again, freedmen from rebel states. That's not our group of people. That's not our group of people. We can just drill down on refugee and freedmen from a, from a financial standpoint. A refugee with somebody who still has debt that's owed to the person that financed them coming from Europe over here. So we have to understand these people came over here and had to work and pay off a debt to gain their freedom in this new land. A freedman would be a European who paid such yeah. debt, Correct. but still uh, chose to uh, walk away from their citizenship of the United States government. The refugee was the one, it's still $3,000 that person might've needed to work off and they ran off. Another point I would point out is this is coming up under the war department. Mm -hmm. So when we say we're prisoners of war, we're, even though we're looking at the European side of the coin right now, we can already see there's been unlawful wars, there's been a trail of tears that took place. And so what happened in the South or what they call the Bible Belt or the Dirty South, we're going to walk through this timeline that when you look at the lynchings and the sundown towns and having to use Negro motorist green books to figure out where you could go without getting killed. Mm -hmm. If that ain't a prisoner of war, what else is that? Who who else on this land had to use those type of instruments just to travel safely? And it's amazing how Jewish media has made us forget about our story. And we're supposed to prop everybody else's story up. And the Jews don't even have their experience on this damn land. So we really just got everybody disrespecting us. It's time for us to just tell everybody to shut the fuck up, sit down. We got most seniority on this land, just like if you had a job. You you've been on the job ten years and you got temp you got temporary workers getting more benefits than you. That's how it is with these illegal immigrants and everything coming over here. You got people that ain't been on the land ten years getting more benefits than you, and you've been here for hundreds of years. Facts, facts. Excellent point. Excellent point. Before we move on to the next document, I just want to highlight that these again are government documents. As Chief Quietwater alluded to earlier, you can find this in the Library of Congress. Look, anything with that dot gov on the back of it, these are all documents for public uh, public record. So again, these are acts. So this is something that's written by this government. The last thing we just saw was Emancipation Proclamation it came from the president of the government at that time. And we're gonna show you another uh, proclamation, Amnesty Proclamation from the president after Lincoln. And what this is gonna highlight is just gonna put the nail in the coffin. They, they actually tell you that these Confederates or these Confederate soldiers were pretending. It's a pretend Confederacy. And again, it's gonna highlight that it was a rebellion as well. So if you could, I'm not sure if it'll let you uh, quick search it, but we see one shoot in the first hell, paragraph. We see rebellion three times. We see it three times. So I'll go ahead and read that bottom part uh, portion. Uh, so here, uh, to induce all persons to return to their loyalty and to restore the authority of the United States, issue proclamations offering amnesty and pardon to certain persons who had directly or by implication participated in said rebellion, not war. Because again, who has the authority to uh, declare war? Congress. So you had the president at the time calling it a war, uh, a rebellion rather. You had the Freedom Bureau 
calling it a rebellion. And you also have the previous president calling it a rebellion. So why do we say it's a war? That was one of the biggest things for me, um, you know, learning all of this information up to this point and really coming to terms with the fact that, yeah, there were there was not a civil war. You know, you go back to going to school and you got a whole entire um, whole entire class that you that's mandatory to take for American history when you're in high school just to learn now that there literally was no war declared. So I think that's a very um, good sticking point that people just need to wrap their brains around. My question real quick would be for Chief, uh, uh, Chief Ether. Any questions you got so far, bro, as we walking through this information? No, nah, like I'm just soaking it all in, gang. Like y'all, I love how y'all being so methodical with it right now. Y'all got y'all points, y'all got y'all references. And I love the fact that y'all attacking it from a, a angle that you don't hear it from a lot, especially, you know, nowadays we kind of hear the same information kind of regurgitated and re-rinsed and rewashed. And it's it's quite refreshing to hear this perspective for y'all to have this level of accuracy with what y'all putting out. Like, I got to say, I wasn't expecting this, gang. I ain't going to lie. I didn't know what to expect, but I... Y'all, y'all surgical with this shit right now. I, ain't gonna lie. I don't have no questions. I don't got no questions. Um, I'm in the chat, looking at the chat. Chat if y'all have any questions. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll hop in and ask if I have any. But right now, y'all cooking, man. I can't say nothing right now. Continue. Hey, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's big. That's big. Um, we'll go ahead and continue, man. Go ahead and continue. Uh, whipping this up real quick. Um, again, though, like we said, it's a rebellion. We just show you three documents that are from this government and the chief commander in chief of this government saying that, hey, it's a rebellion. But we're also going to show you that these fuckers that try to claim our identity as this quote unquote Confederates, when you see uh, a Confederate flag, you should look at these Europeans and say, hey, man, you rocking my uh, ancestor shit. What you doing there? Same way we see folks, you know, repping a certain gang. Nah, that's my shit, bro. What you doing? You, you tripping right now. You rocking my shit like that's yours. And we're going to show you exactly why we meant that or why we say that. So if you could scroll down, it should be in the first uh, pardon. There we go. So I'm going to read off these, this, uh, this pardon here. And it's going to show up multiple times as far as this pretend confederacy. You're going to see that. Uh, where am I starting at? I'm sorry. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, there you go, where it says first. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I'm gonna read off this okay. here. It says, first, all who are or shall have been pretended civil or diplomatic officers or otherwise domestic or foreign agents of the pretended Confederate government. That's the mic drop, y'all. Their own president is saying that you niggas is fugazi. Why are you trying to be the American by calling yourselves the Confederacy? If y'all don't get y'all asses back to this United States shit and stop playing, they're saying that in this own document right here. Hey, if you want to, Chief Quietwater, if you could uh, type it in uh, Confederacy or Confederate pretend, you're going to see how many times it pops up. So shoot, the third line as well. So again, people were just highlighting how their own government is saying that, hey, this wasn't a Confederacy. But again, when we go to these brainwashing camps called school, that we be in for more time than we spend more time in these brainwashing camps than we do with our parents, a lot of the times, you'll start to see why they're creating enemies within our own family by telling us, hey, yeah, the Confederacies, you know, these were these people, these were them people, while they got us thinking we from the quote unquote motherland, motherland. we from Africa. So it's like- okay, Here's okay. another downside of that information too. This mm -hmm. is the downside of getting this information now you have to look at people who look like you and say, why are you lying and saying it was a Confederate, uh, a civil war? Why are you lying and telling me that rednecks were the Confederacy? So this is the downside of getting red pilled, if you will. Once you uh, study to show yourself approved, now you start to see that, and I hate to say this, and there's no disrespect to the scholars, 
you got to grow uh, in steps. So I have a lot of literature from a lot of different of our scholars, but you have to now, once you uh, come 360 degrees with it, start to realize the people who look like us are our worst enemy because they're the closest ones to us. They're the ones that are telling us that, that these rednecks were Confederates. When we're looking at the president that replaced Abraham Lincoln after he was killed in his amnesty document, he's clearly telling you that these rednecks can't be Confederate. Why? Because Confederacy is an American form of government. But if I walk outside right now with a Confederate jacket on, y'all niggas gonna think I'm crazy. No, facts, facts, facts. And uh, just to kind of, again, drive the nail in the coffin, uh, have cheap quiet water, if you could pull up that Confederacy maps, cause we're gonna show you that it was, again, multiple Confederacies that we had on this land. Um, so again, another, Proof of claim from the Library of Congress. I know you have to zoom in there a little bit, but as we walk it through, you'll see where it says Iroquois. You'll see where it says Creek. You'll see all of these different um, uh, Aboriginal tribes, indigenous tribes from this land. So as we walk through it here, I'm gonna actually put it up on my end as well. So if you could, it should be right above that, the look like Virginia area. Zoom in, it should say something about Confedera, Confederati. Right there. Right here? Yep, Confederacy. That's ours, people. That is ours. If we go a little bit further north, I think we'll even be able to see where it says the Iroquois is, uh, as well. It's a little hard. Right here. Yep, Iroquois. So Iroquois Confederacy. Um, so again, we're just showing exactly the actual um, tribes that was on this land, the territories that we occupied prior to these Europeans. And then if you could also, I know we kind of jumped a little past this, but I also want to just show, you know, what Georgia was as a colony, because it's not the same cookie cutter thing that we think of today as far as Georgia, South Carolina, things of that nature. Um, it's probably a better map on the, that document, that Georgia colony one. Okay. And I think that's gonna be even better for the viewer because they'll actually get to see that, hey, Georgia ran from damn the Atlantic all the way to uh, Mississippi. That was Georgia. Right here. Mm -hmm. So now it starts to make sense why they would put or empty out their debtor prisons into this colony called Georgia to make sure that we would uh, to stop the um, escaping of a lot of our ancestors to Florida, hence the Seminoles. See, we think Seminole means runaway slave. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Seminole just means we was escaping unlawful warren from these invaders, which is the European. And I'm not gonna call them Americans. The most thing you can find me calling them is a US citizen, because that's exactly who they are. So again, we have to make sure that we're reclaiming our identity um, and we're just putting the, the puzzle, the pieces together here. So again, Georgia, yes, just, uh, was from, what's that, the Atlantic all the way to, yeah, the Mississippi. So that was Georgia, and as you see above, you'll see the uh, Carolinas. And also right above that, on that little dotted line, you'll see Creek Indians. And then you'll see Upper Creek and things of that nature. So this was the Creek Confederacy that this United States government was unlawfully warned against. All of this that you see right here. And if I can throw one thing in while you have that map up, what we have to understand, if you can highlight where the Mississippi River is, Chief Quietwater, what we have to understand during the Trail of Tears is everybody did not cross the Mississippi River into what we now know as Oklahoma. If you look at this map, you notice that there's no state named Oklahoma. And so if your family originates east of the Mississippi River, that means that your family stood 10 toes down and was willing to can go through the unlawful wars over the centuries up until today. We really got to understand that there are people who look like us that are in Oklahoma right now, 
But if we can pull up the websites before the end of this uh, video of each of those five fake tribes, they all say it on their about us pages on their websites that the original, the original, the original Seminole, the original Choctaw all come from east of the Mississippi River. That's us, y'all. So they basically stole our birthright and you got a bunch of adopted European peasants and adopted Asian immigrants that were put in Oklahoma along with some of our people that tapped out probably due to their towns being burned or being forced by the gun to walk on the Trail of Tears. But the vast majority of us never left the South. Excellent point, excellent point. And I like the term you used too, adopted. Because the right. next document that we'll she or the next act document that we'll actually uh, go ahead and highlight is that, yeah, when he said a lot of these, um, and we'll do that at the, uh, we're pretty much closer to wrapping it up, that a lot of these people that's claiming to be from our lineage don't look like us, y'all. They whitewash. And they actually show in this document here, which is the treaty uh, with the Creeks, uh, not the Creeks, rather the Choctaw and the Chickasaw of 1866. We're going to see that they have adopted uh, white uh, freedmen, different things of that nature. Let me see here. This document also highlights that there was no civil war. Uh, if you type in Civil War Force Chief Quiet Water, see if that pops up. Mm -mm. So we have civil, actually just civil, a civilization, not even civil war. Type in the war part too to see, uh, just to make sure it's you know accurate there. So nothing pops up, but if you pop in or type in rebellion, you'll definitely see it. Again, prior to the late rebellion, prior to the late rebellion, multiple times people shows up. What's, what's that count? Six times? Mm -hmm. You're going to find it six times within this document. And this is about the Chickasaw and Choctaw Americans, them establishing themselves, them having to adopt these quote unquote freedmen, which again is the European, these refugees, these white settlers. Um, but I want to type in something here. Let's type in Negroes to see what pops up. Let's see what pops up in Negroes. And we're going to see exactly who the Negro is without them even actually telling you specifically or, or in plain language or straight up who the Negroes are. So it says here, the said nations further agree that all Negroes, not otherwise disqualified or disabled, shall be competent witnesses in all civil and criminal suits and proceedings in the Choctaw and Chickasaw courts. Damn, that's a lot of power to be given to some former slaves, right? Right. <laughs> former slave. So again, this is just a reclassification term. So they took our names, our, um, our original name, whether it be Chickasaw, Choctaw, Cherokee, uh, Seminole, they took our names and they gave the ones that didn't go, what's that, west of the Mississippi into present day uh, Oklahoma. They said, okay, y'all Negroes, y'all stubborn. We don't call y'all Negroes. Since y'all, we couldn't rope y'all off and take you to Oklahoma. We was too busy, you know, getting our asses. We'll, we'll just take who we can, but we'll let them keep their name. We'll let them keep their native tongue. But the Americans that we've been unlawfully warned against, whether it be in the Seminole War, the unlawful Seminole War, or whether it be in that Silver Rebellion, we're going to call y'all Negroes. But what this is saying here is that you'll have the same status as Choctaw and Chickasaw in their court system. Anybody want to build off of that? No, that's that's pretty much what it was. Um, one thing that I I wanted to say, you know, how they're trying to, you know, the, the critical race theory that they've been talking mm -hmm. about in regards to removing a lot of the history out of the, the institutions of education is because I think more of us are waking up 
and we are being enlightened with, you know, bits and pieces of information. And I think that's their reason for fighting so hard to remove so much more, even though we don't know still most of this stuff that we're talking about, but um, even removing more recent stuff so that they can reconstruct and continue to make up more lies so that our children and children, children will be so far removed from what was really going on that, you know, that's why it's important for us to get this information in and continue to build on it, you know, to be knowledgeable of what took place and how we can fix it. Absolutely. And for me, I would say this is just common sense or street smarts. Um, if these people are the real American, the people in Oklahoma right now, why didn't they invent blues? Why didn't they invent rock and roll? Why didn't they invent jazz, rap music? Uh, why is it that when people come to this landmass, they're not copying anybody in the fake five civilized tribes? Why is it that everything is mimicked off of us? Because we're the real American. And that's from the industries to the entertainment to sports. Why, why, why we don't see these people from the fake five civilized tribes have a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan? They're not the American. Excellent point. Excellent point. And I just want to highlight here too, I'm going to re reread uh, that article. Um, and I'm also going to show you that there's a difference or the Negro and the Freedmen are two different people because that's what they're highlighting here. So again, I'll go ahead and read from the beginning. The said nations further agree that all Negroes, not otherwise disqualified or disabled, shall be competent witnesses in all civil and criminal suits and proceedings in the Choctaw and Chickasaw courts, any law to the contrary notwithstanding. And they fully recognize the right of the freedmen. So again, two different groups of people. If they weren't, then they would just say Negroes. So they clearly, indicating that the freedmen and the Negro are two different groups of people. So we're not the freedmen people. Again, the freedmen was that European that worked off his debt, that was still in those Southern states rebelling against the United States government, and they're now being given rights within these uh, Indian territories known as Oklahoma. But again, as we see here, the Negro is on equal standing as the Chickasaw and Choctaw, because they're giving them hell, the same advantages in their courts. So again, just highlighting the difference, they're, 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 they're clearly indicating that the freedmen and the Negro are two separate groups of people. So I wanna make sure that that, that is clear, um, because again, the scholars, and like, he, like Chief Alligator said, we have to look at them crazy. We have to look at them differently. Say, okay, this ain't what you've been teaching for 20 plus years. You've been calling the African-American the Black. The, the the color, the Negro is the freedman. But it clear, clearly these documents are saying something else. So we can have we to highlight, the freedman. Can we highlight one more thing, uh, Chief Quietwater, that just dropped down a couple of sentences where it says, and they agree. Yep. And let's go all the way down to the end of that paragraph right there. Okay. And they agree on the part of their respective nations that all laws all laws shall be equal in their operation upon Choctaws, Chickasaws, and Negroes, and that no distinction affecting the latter shall at any time be made, and that they shall be treated with kindness and be protected against injury. And they further agree that while the said freemen, different group of people, this is the European that's paid off his debt to be on this land, and be, and be now lib, uh, uh, have liberty. And the said freemen now in the Choctaw and Chickasaw nation remain in said nations respectively, they shall be entitled to as much land as they may cultivate for the support of themselves and families in cases where they do not support themselves and families by hiring, not interfering with existing improvements without the consent of the occupant. It being understood that in the event of the making of the laws, rules and regulations, aforesaid, the 40 acres aforesaid shall stand in the place of the land cultivated as, as last aforesaid. Deconstruct that. The Negro is able to move within the court system of the Choctaw and Chickasaw just like them. He's also to be protected. But who do they give the land to? The European peasant freedmen. Did y'all catch that? That's how these crackers got the land. Great point. Great point. 
and shit, they even got more of it. We don't, won't go through it today, but through the homestead at, what was it, uh, up to 160? Uh, what, it got 80 acres and then anything pretty much around them. So that's how you'll be able to see how, okay, these Europeans was able to get so much of our land. Again, unlawful wars because Congress never declared them, capturing our land and the water surrounding it, bringing over that European peasantry group saying, hey, move in. Everything is just a turnkey home for you. Turn, you don't even got to do, who, who's the last owners? Don't even worry about them. We got them roped off somewhere else. We're still battling them, but y'all can move in safely. So now you get to see the picture. Now you get to see how this shit, how we've been steady at the same percentage as far as our group of people and how they can be now the majority on our land. So they dumping their ass off on them boats. We wasn't on them boats. That was them Europeans. And they're showing you exactly how they were established or how they got set up with that land and resources, things of that nature to continue to put us, the American, at the bottom on our own land. So shoot, that was the, I think, what, definitely want to highlight the, um, these, these uh, five civilized tribes and what we were discussing about their chief alligator earlier about how they'll tell you exactly where they originated from, east of the Mississippi. I'm not sure if you have the map, Chief Quiet Water, just uh, for visual purposes of the American Removal uh, Act. If not, I'll definitely drop it here or I can even share my screen. If you can, you want to share? Okay, I'll stop sharing mine. Just because I know myself, I'm a visual learner. But again, we'll see exactly where these different uh, tribes came from, where they originated from. So again, we already showed you the actual map around this time of what Georgia actually was. There was no Alabama or Mississippi. Uh, Georgia pretty much went from the Atlantic uh, Ocean up into Mississippi, but you'll see exactly the same five civilized tribes and where they all originated from east of this Mississippi River. So these groups of people that are claiming to be of our lineage now, again, they've adopted Europeans, Asians, uh, again, these freedmen, they're not our group of people, but again, they're take, they've taken our name and they've actually kept uh, some of our native tongue, even if that may, that may not even be our native tongue for all we know, but we do definitely know that this, they've uh, taken our name. And if we can just, uh, if I'm gonna add one point, you, you can see the connection between that Tampa, Florida area and New Orleans. Uh, you can see how they were shipping from Tampa into what we know as New Orleans. If anybody's heard of the second line, that's a that's a famous festival in New Orleans. The second line, they're honoring Chief Osceola, which was one of the chiefs during the Seminole War. That's the same chief that comes out when Florida State Seminoles college football team plays their football games. He's the one that comes out and throws his arrow at the 50 yard line. So you can see why New Orleans does the second line, because there's a direct link during the American Removal Act of 1830s. And uh, we also gonna pull up those websites of those fake five civilized tribes where they admit on their websites as well that the original Americans come east of the Mississippi River. Correct, correct. I think the first one I got pulled up here is the Cherokee. I um, mean, shit, right in there, I believe it's the second or first paragraph, yeah. So again, Cherokee Nation. I can't see it. Can not see it? I can. Okay. I can. I can. Stop it again. What about now? I'm seeing the Zoom screen. You see, I that? can I can see it. What about you, Chief Ether? Want to make sure they. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Okay. Try sliding over. Uh, I got see. it now. You got it. Okay. Yeah. So we see here, originally located in the southeastern United States in parts of Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. That's exactly what we just showed in that picture, y'all. So they're showing you, they're telling you specifically, you ain't gotta read too far into it, the second paragraph, where they originated from. So who the hell are these people? Who are they? 
Who are they? They don't look like nobody on this on this channel, on this video right now. And they're telling you exactly where they originated from. East of that Mississippi, southeast, basically Muscogee Creek uh, Confederacy. So this is the, what was that, Cherokee? So we're gonna pull up another pull up another one. We're gonna pull up Choctaw, Chickasaw, pretty much all of the different quote unquote five civilized tribes that were located in that southeast uh, part of present-day United States. Pull up this one. Mm -mm. Let me see if it shows. So this would be the Choctaw. Post removal. Trying to see if they show exactly where they were from. It'd be on their About Us page. This should be it about the history. Let me see if I can scroll around. Man, it's me or not. Mm -hmm. They may have actually just not even addressed it. Where they from? Let's see if it was on this bottom page here. What's, what's the tabs across the top on their website? He said, what's the tabs? So about history, culture, government. So those there. What we do have here. Just saw 1826. Uh, yeah. So refusal of Chickasaws and Choctaws. This document refers to the Choctaw and Chickasaw Indians' refusal to give up more land and move west of the Mississippi. So again, highlighting again, before that Removal Act, before that 1866 Indian treaties, which all of them have one, they're showing exactly where they was from. They were east of the Mississippi. And you're going to see this pretty much same re reoccurring theme for all of these uh, now known as the five civilized tribes in these areas. Let's see, we've got to pull up one more. Let's see if I got the similar one. Put this up real quick. So even here, 1700s, Florida. 1700s is when Florida Indians collectively became known as Seminoles, a name meaning wild people or runaway. So again, read that top paragraph. Read that top paragraph right under Creeks Mitigate the Florida. Right here. So we got Seminole history begins with bands of Creek Americans from Georgia and Alabama who migrated to Florida in the 1700s. Conflicts with Europeans and other tribes caused them to seek new land to live in peace. Right there. Right there. So all of these tribes originated from what we know as the Creek Confederacy. Um, you'll look, you'll be, if you actually go to their actual websites, you'll see that they have constitutions that uh, come after this 1866 uh, Indian treaties, come after this civil rebellion come after this 1830 uh, American Removal Act. So they're claiming, they're saying here and there in their documents, they predate these uh, constitutions when they say that these uh, nations actually became or came into existence. But again, contradicting themselves because they're saying here, 1700s is when these nations were actually being originated and actually prior to that. So again, just again, highlighting the lies, not only being told by this US government, but also these uh, imposters that are claiming to be the Americans out in Oklahoma territory. Let me see here. But shoot, do we have any questions from the viewers? Uh, as we kind of close out, any questions from the viewers that we can ask? I know we threw a lot at you all today, uh, but again, we wanted to provide that proof of claim for you all that way. Again, don't believe us. Read the documents. These are all government documents. 
Again, things that you can find uh, within the Library of Congress. Um, quick little Google search. We always provide them in all of our videos because again, we don't want to just lecture to the viewer. We want to actually show you the documents that we're getting this information from and just wait on the scale. We show you the, the lies that these, uh, this government tells us. They're contradicting themselves when it comes to this money, their supreme law of the land, and how they all did this unlawful warrant against our people, which still happens today. Um, so again, yeah, if you, have, you all have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them, reach out, anything like that. Yo, where can we, uh, where can we find y'all at? We all, where, where do y'all usually make content at? Perfect, perfect. So we're on, on YouTube. You can find us at The Lost Confederacy, uh, T-H-E-L-O-S-T, -E Confederacy. Um, we're also on Instagram as well. And all we want to do is just provide, you know, provide this information to our people. We're not asking for anything, just for you all to do the homework. You know, we'll help walk you through it. I can speak for myself. Before it clicked to me, we was doing this for about a year. It clicked to me after year one, like, damn, hold on. There wasn't no civil war, hold on. What the fuck? Uh, that was the highlight for me. I mean, all the, most of the information was new information for me, but the civil war is the one that kind of just stuck out. Like all of it was new with reading treaties because I never read treaties before, but just heightened my knowledge. Um, all the information was was good information, but that was one that just stuck out for me. Can we do one more thing, y'all? Can we pull up that Jim Crow map? Yeah, definitely. Let me go ahead and should have that. And I think y'all introduced a totally new talking point that has to be explored even further oh, yeah. by the community. I don't think enough people have really touched on the Confederacy, uh, like the different dynamics of it. I know there's a lot of theses and hypotheses about what took place, but you know, a lot of times we get caught up in, you know, arguing over semantics and words and things of that. Mm -hmm. We get lost off of the, uh, you know, off the mission, but I think y'all introduced a new talking point tonight, man. Uh, at least one that I, I, I haven't heard from this perspective before. Um, I have heard a lot of things about the Confederacy I have my own understanding and research about it, but the way that y'all attacked it tonight to say that there's no civil, there wasn't no civil war, <laughs> right? Like we got to examine this now. You can't just say shit like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Without right. further research, further exploration on the topic. And, and I appreciate y'all for bringing that because there's so much information. It's so much fucking history and culture to disseminate and go through. It's, it's hard for a few handful of people to do it. So it's an honor to see that there's more people coming out. And not only that y'all coming out, but y'all bringing new and fresh understandings and perspective to the information. That's what we need, gang. We need a new you know, breath of fresh air to come in and look at the same shit we think we all figured out already. Right. You know what I mean? And just look at it from a different perspective so you can probe critical thinking and we can progress this understanding about who we are. So I appreciate y'all, man. I, <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. I didn't know what the hell to think. But <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be like this. Like for me personally, it makes me, you know, want to further do my research and further be more precise on uh you know some of the topics i talk about and kind of honing in on specific things so people can get a better understanding of what really took place with us and y'all did it man y'all was surgical tonight i can't lie like i gotta go back and watch this you know what i mean and, and kind of you know i might maybe what i'll do is when i have tv gets out of jail maybe i'll have y'all back if y'all will uh if willing, you know what I mean? And we can, I'll, I'll rewatch this video. I'll come with my own research and talking points and we can build off what y'all talked about today. And then whatever new information y'all might want to bring, we can chop it up, man. I would love to continue to have y'all as much as y'all want to come through. You know, I'll facilitate that. Y'all just let me know any way I can help. And yeah, man, anything else y'all want to say? Uh, uh, do y'all want me to Put the link in the chat or take questions from the chat. Oh, you said you want to take uh take care of this, right? Oh yeah, so y'all got it. Go ahead. Just wanted to highlight this. Uh, what uh, go ahead, there, Chief Alligator. I know you said something with the Jim Crow. 
Yeah, I just want to put the silver bullet in the chamber. And I heard everything you said, Chief Ether. And uh, I'll say this, as well as to anybody that's listening to this, uh, recovery is hard. And so we've been lied to so much that a lot of us will think that there was a civil war. We're going to ask you a basic, simple question. If the Constitution is the operating manual for this government, there has to be a document where Congress declared a civil war. There also has to be a document where they declared the Seminole Wars. We can't find it. If you can find it, more kudos to you. But to tie in that we are prisoners of war, we can see the Indian Removal Act was removing everybody from east of the Mississippi River. The reconstructed lie that we're told is that we were freed as slaves in 1865. If that's true, then why would you have another 100 years of unlawful wars, which is classified as the Jim Crow era? And it comes from the same Creek Confederacy era where the unlawful Seminole Wars took place. So what we're doing is just standing on the edge of the coin and just walking down the timeline. You didn't become a citizen of the United States government until 1965. So how can they tell you in 1865 you were free? But then what the fuck was the purpose of MLK? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm asking the people that are listening. If you were freed in 1865, what was the purpose of an MLK to give you the right to vote and to desegregate? That was the whole point of the civil rights movement was get rid of intense military occupation because desegregation is a fancy way of saying you were under intense military occupation. You couldn't get caught in white folks' towns when the sun went down or they could kill you. They could hang you in town square and nobody get charged with murder. They could kill your kid like Emmett Till and nobody get charged with murder. And she's still living today. So I think we've been lied to so much through TV that Jim Crow makes it sound better to accept than military occupation. But when you look at the history, that's what it is. We prisoners of war on our own land. And one thing that I will say um, for people who are, um, you know, interested in the information that we have presented is to start from the beginning when we first started um, first, our very first video, and whenever you have time, just chronologically listen to all the videos and the picture will make sense to you. Because if you do it in bits and pieces, it's not going to make sense. Um, so I think listening from the beginning all the way up until, you know, where we are now will build a picture in your mind and make you understand more of the fact of there being no civil war. We are prisoners of war. And, um, this was not made for us. And we need to stop including ourselves in what they made for, for, for them. You know, the 39 people who drafted that document, it was for them and for their descendants. So I think that's one thing I would like to just pin for people. Excellent point, excellent point. Um, definitely, again, just want to Thank you, Chief Ether, um, again, allowing us your platform to get this information out. Uh, like we said, we just want to make sure we provide this information to the people. Like you said, new, fresh uh, information from a different perspective. And um, you should question it. We want you to question it. Uh, we want you to you know, look into it yourself, because I think when you hear something like that, like you said, there was no civil war. Hold on. What the fuck you mean? It makes you like, OK, let me do the information. Let me make sure. Let me try to find it, find something that proves that it was. And be honest, like Chief Alligator said, if you could find that document where they declared a civil war, you could find that document where they declared a similar war, by all means, show that. Um, like you said, if you want to have us again on the show, you got that information or anything like that, we'll be more than happy to join again. Um, but again, just want to uh, give you your flowers, man, and very appreciative of you of just allowing us to do this, uh, do this again. So shout out to you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Y'all got to come back, man. We got to talk about this. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? I gotta go back because I done been through like I like I said, I got my own hypothesis of things. And what y'all have stated tonight pretty much goes along with what a lot of circumstantial evidence has suggested, right? But mm -hmm. for y'all to bring out actual documents, for you to ask a specific question, say, hey, if you can find the civil war, let's see it. That kind of shows that you have a level of confidence about what you're saying, right? Which further makes me want to go find out what the fuck y'all talking about right now. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, 
<laughs> Hold on, like y'all talking a little too confident. Uh, you know what I mean? For for it to be like a game, you know what I'm saying? So this is what I'm gonna postulate to the Aboriginal community. Uh, my brothers and sisters, they made a claim. They made a postulation. You know what I'm saying? Like they they made an assertion, and it was very clear with documentation to back it up. Now. Hey, now, a lot of people say that this is like one of the most educated and learned communities and we got the best scholars and all of that. I would like y'all to dissect this talking point. I would like y'all to run your methodology um, and see what conclusion you come up with. And the next time y'all come back, I'll get with you, Chief Biko, and we'll set up a time when y'all could come back and maybe we can have a round table discussion about some of this information, man, because we got to, you know, we got to uncover all of these lies and deception that we know that, you know, the colonizer, whoever the enemy is, who you like to say they are, uh, has utilized to, uh, you know, kind of get us on the wrong path. So I think it's wonderful that we got a new, you know, a new breath of fresh air. Like I said earlier, man, I, I didn't know. I think I, I think some people on my team told me y'all was on the indigenous one or a couple or somewhere around y'all been a, around the community. A couple of weeks, a couple okay, of weeks cool. ago. Yeah, right. so, one, uh, I wasn't privy, you know what I'm saying? When you reached out, but as soon as y'all came on, my team was like, oh yeah, I know who that is. So I, y'all be making y'all rounds. I'm sure we'll be seeing y'all throughout the community. And if y'all haven't already, for all those in the chat, make sure y'all go support them. Make sure y'all go to their social medias, their YouTube page. And y'all say y'all got Instagram, right? Yep. You can at, Lost, it. at The Lost Confederacy. Correct. You know correct. what I'm saying? Both. And uh, um, if a moderator is in here right now, Gretchen or somebody, I know somebody's in here right now. If y'all can go and look up their page real quick and drop it in the chat, that'll be wonderful. You know what I mean? That'll help out because people... Thank you. Like, you get to typing it in, you'll get lost. They'll be like, you won't see it. Like, yeah, I already know how it go. I didn't mm -hmm. yep. So, uh, yeah, anything else y'all want to say before we get out of here, fam? You got any questions uh, from your viewers? And oh, the only look. thing, and the only thing else that I would say is uh, this whole lying myth that we can't network and we can't build together. Shout out to the Indigenous One channel and mm -hmm. shout out to you because we are working together. We are getting on one accord. We are forming like Voltron. We mm -hmm. are forming that confederacy. So yeah, shout out to everybody. We got to get off that doom and gloom. Like when we going to come together? We are together. We on your channel tonight. You understand what I'm saying? That's a fact. That's a fact, gang. Okay, I see. It says, hold on, I see. Let me see if I can get an actual distinct question because most of these look like they just responding to a talking point they heard. Um, let me see if I can get. So in reference to the Gullah Wars, right? Did that happen? Yes, the Seminole Wars did happen because we read the treaties. They got treaties for it that their military went into. I think that's the part that people are gonna have to really understand. Congress makes the Europeans law. Congress never declared the war, but their rogue military was signing fake treaties. See, we were never supposed right. to read treaties. We were just supposed to just watch right. movies, the roots mm -hmm. and we were never mm -hmm. supposed to go to the supreme law of the land and really understand what happened on the land. We just decided to read the treaties and get down to what happened on the land. So now and we that's have- why Oh, so, sorry, sis, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and that's why I, I suggested um, when people have time to start from the beginning, because it will make sense. It's a lot of reading and compre comprehension definitely has to be on point because I struggled <laughs> with all the information in the beginning. But, you know, we've been doing this for over a year, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've been doing it for a while and just... Um, this could be a total American, a real American history course. And it will definitely change, you know, our mind in regards to who we are, what we did, how we fought, you know, we didn't just surrender, you know, we, we actually did fight. Um, so I think that it will just starting from the beginning will build up until present day in regards to how we got to this point. And I, I will say also that the information is there and is not hard to find and it's not that they in my opinion it's not that they lied it's just that we did not we have not read and found this information you know because it's there it's on their documents 
And so we provide it in the um, description channel, not to cut your bill, Chief Ether, but any video you click on on our channel, go to the description section. We give the links to everything that we're reading tonight. So you don't have to go around and go to the Library of Congress, click on the description section. We got the literature right there for you. We're giving it to our people. You can't sell your freedom. It's our shit. No mm -hmm. hustle. We giving it to you. That's what's up. That's what's up. I got a question from the chat. It says, if we are prisoners of war, which war are we prisoners? Mm -hmm. The unlawful again, unlawful seminal wars. So I don't, with, with the viewer, I don't want you all to make sure I'm hold on. Okay. With the viewer, I don't want you all to think that people weren't fighting. When we say there was no civil war or seminal war, what we're saying is that Congress never declared them. So if we go back again to what it said, Congress has the right to declare war as well as uh, for captures of land and water. If they never declared that, what we're saying is, well, they were, we were fighting them. But again, all of that was unlawful. So all of the treaties like the Moultrie Creek, Payne's Landing, how they uh, ceded all of that land, all of that shit is ours because it was unlawfully done through these unlawful. I got you. And so basically, is it from y'all understanding that because of this understanding now that these wars were not authorized mm -hmm. by the proper authority, right? Mm -hmm. by looking at these treaties, basically these treaties are the smoking gun mm -hmm. for what took place, right? Correct. Okay, That's and correct. so somebody who would be a descendant of people from these historically, uh, you know, affected geographical locations that these things and conflicts took place, now we can kind of understand and see uh, you know, how they come to be where they are today based upon what happened in the past. So I kind of see what y'all are going with now. So it wasn't a war as in the government said, let's go to war with these niggas. It mm -hmm. was more as if the military took it upon themselves and kind of created their own military type government, which would make sense because if there was a military going around doing whatever they wanted, right? Who the fuck was about to stop them? The government? Them niggas in the fucking builders? No, I don't think so. I don't think they gonna stop them. You know what I mean? So if they was really a force like that, going into indigenous people's territories uh, and, and, you know, usurping their land and actually being successful, it's hard for me to believe they wasn't the ones that was actually making things happen anyway. Right, shit. Correct. And they, and they usurped kind of the power of Congress Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Military. Created their military. own military, new Congress, and that may be what we under today. But I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just hypothesizing. But I understand what y'all postulating now, and I like, I like where y'all going. But let me, uh, let me. I, I would just, I would just look at it a little different, Chief Ether. Um, if you can go back to the actual Constitution, look at the United States government as the left hand, the military as the right hand, mm -hmm. but it's connected to the same body. They knew what their military was doing. You understand? They knew that they were going to use their military to conquer land, but they knew they never anticipated that we would actually re read the rule book. The rule book is the Constitution. Let's highlight that right quick to answer that person's question. Congress has to declare war. They have to. So what we're doing is we're putting their document right back in their face and said, this is your constitution. This is what you're supposed to be honoring. Where is the document where Congress declared war? They cannot, there is no document where they declared civil war. There is no document for the Seminole Wars. It was an unlawful land grab. That's what we're saying. We're, we're reconstructing, we're, re, we're, we're re-engineering their whole playbook. And it all starts with there's no money, like Article 1, Section 10. We've never been paid gold and silver our whole life. They took the money out of the system in 1971. Mm -hmm. So we got so to ask ourselves, and, and we break all this down on our channel, but right when they included niggas in 1965 to be citizens, shortly thereafter, they took the money out of the system because they never budgeted for us to be citizens. Your whole life, Chief Ether, you've never been paid money. According to their constitution, the only way you can pay for a car, pay for a house, pay for a boat is with gold and silver coin, a tender and payment of debts. 
So there is no money. So why are you calling them supreme? And why are you dealing with racism? They broke. <laughs> it's a bankrupt government. It's this shit is mental for us at this point. Yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact. And uh, all the evidence is right in front of you to what you're saying. You know what I mean? It's not really hard to see once you understand what you're looking at. And now I understand even more what you mean as far as. So basically, the government raised an illegal war that they didn't even follow their own rule book by. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right? Correct. And that rule book most likely has it's in concordance with other rule books. Like these people don't just move on their own. They always try to give off the inclination that they're unified in law and understanding and righteousness and goodness and stuff. So I understand. So once again, it's like a smoking gun. Like mm -hmm. every treaty, right? Or every conflict that they historically record is like a smoking gun because mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be there yet they are there yes. taking land. Correct, correct. And so, so is it from y'all understanding if I can trace my people historically back to these geographical locations that I potentially could have a claim for restitution utilizing these uh, new facts? Us as a collective. Uh, I'm gonna let everybody share on what you just asked, but yeah, us as a collective. And let me put one more spin on it. If the European comes out tomorrow, if Joe Biden comes out and says, we're declaring war on the blacks, my how we will move a whole lot different at that point, right? If he comes out on TV and says, I'm declaring war on the Negro, we're going to get on cold real quick, right? That's what's, stopping, that's what's stopping us from getting on cold. They're not telling us we're in war, but I'm old enough to have lived through the war on poverty, the war on drugs, the war on crime. Now the uh, invisible war with COVID. I've lived through four wars in my lifetime but they never declared it on paper, but we can look at the prison industrial complex and say, well, damn, from elementary school to high school, damn, where everybody go from the neighborhood? Oh, they in greater confinement. Why? The government waged war through the war on crime. So they've been warring against us my whole life. Great point, great point. I, was yeah, I agree with everything, yeah, definitely. That war on drugs, war on crime, war on pro poverty, who is always the, the victim of these quote unquote wars that these uh war on drugs. Yeah, war on drugs. Who is the mm -hmm. victim of these things? I, I mean, people? even down to the Vietnam War, the other wars, this I mean, every, our whole reality has been so affected exactly in some form of reality with about war. Like it's it's pretty easy to see that we're not in a a free so-called nation like we in some form of a battlefield right. where shit is going down and they they convinced a lot of our people that we ain't even in no war right now and i think that's why we got a lot of casualties right a lot of people just right. walking out here fucking willy-nilly and don't know it's fucking mortar rounds shooting over you you know mm. it's it's an actual enemy that's working towards defeating you whilst yeah. you chilling you know what i'm saying and i think that is what's most important with it i don't think it's a it's something that we gotta initially react to it's just something we need to understand right right the fact that we still here lets us know that we still got a, a, a opportunity to strategize plan and move you know and actually have a chance to to do battle but i think a lot of times they've got us in such an emotional state that once we realize we in war, the first thing a motherfucker want to do is run outside and chop up something to shoot something. And, it, and it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. We got to be way more strategic mm -hmm. in how we move and plan for the future, right? We, I think a lot of time we we want to see the shit. You know what I mean? And I, I get it. Like, who don't who want to work their whole life and not see it coming to fruition? But we gotta have, uh, you know, a little faith and a little understanding in our people and, and plan for the future. We may not see the liberation of our people, but if we plant the seeds, if we lay the foundation, we did our job. That's just what I truly believe, you know. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I thank y'all again, man. Y'all, y'all gave me a beautiful, organic, straightforward, methodical build. You know what I mean? I didn't have to do nothing. I didn't have to add nothing. I ain't had to put no baking soda on it. I ain't uh, no seasoning, dog. No. Hey, professionally cooked. Yeah, it's done. Like I don't need to say nothing else. Um, 
what I'll do is uh I'll get with Chief and uh we'll talk, you know, we'll keep in contact. I got other things, you know, I'm working on as well. So I'll talk with y'all in the background pri privately on that. And maybe I can get, you know, partner up with y'all and get y'all to help me out with some other uh things that I'm creating in the future for our people. Um can we do one more thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I just dropped the link, Chief Biko. Um, because we're talking about being prisoners of war and we're still answering that person's question out of your chat. <clears throat> so we talked about the different wars of my lifetime since I've been living. War on drugs was the earliest one. I remember being in elementary school and they used to give us little weekly readers. And I'm sure people that are around my age, they remember seeing the egg in the frying pan, talking about this is your brain on drugs. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I remember that. That was the 80s. So that was the first war that I remember in my lifetime. Like, damn, yeah, they did have a war on drugs. But we're gonna share this screen real quick. Uh, Chief Biko's gonna pull up this link. And I wanna bring it home for everybody that's three years old or older. Let's just go back to 2020. My, how we forget how this government showed us on December 6th, our right. No, you go ahead. Okay, if you could share it real quick. Um, when I saw this incident in May of 2020, my life changed forever. Now we gotta remember, Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor all hit at the same time. That was May 2020. This video that Chief Biko was about to share, I'll never be the same after this video. So Derek Chauvin killed George Floyd. I never saw that video, but I remember being home that day when it all hit and everybody was in an emotional outrage because they just saw a public lynching like during Jim Crow days. But let's just play a little bit of this video right quick so I can uh, so we can remind everybody because we because because we've been in so many wars that we suffer from short term memory. Look how many people are defending this killer's house. Look. King many are defending this killer's house. Look, many are defending this killer's house. Look how many are defending this killer's house. Look how many. Look how many. Look how many. Look how many are de defending this killer's house. Look, look at this. Look at. They are defending the murderer's house. Look at them. Look at them. Look at her as she's got mace. They ready to do it to all the rest of us too. Y'all know wrong. Okay, Chief Biko. That video, I will never forget that because what that showed me was the, the Jewish media was acting dumb about why they were burning down the police station in Minnesota and everything like that. And that was because the, the people in Minnesota were saying, lock up Derek Chauvin. You got this man on video killing George Floyd with his knee in his neck, but you see the statewide police protecting that man's house because the people had actually went to Derek Chauvin's house to kill him. At that moment, that's when I knew we're prisoners of war because you've never seen them do that against the Asians. You've never seen them do that against the Mexicans. You've never seen them do that against the gays. The only group of people they bring the military out for is us. And if you still think we crazy, January 6th was the cherry on top because they bum rushed the Capitol and you didn't see the military. But when niggas went to go protest in 2020 in DC, they had helicopters with soldiers pointing out the uh, helicopter and everything ready to kill us. So. This ain't rocket science. Every time we stand up, the military come out. I'll stop right there. Hey, man, I don't think there's nothing else to be said. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I got a meeting to go to. Yes, you know what I'm saying? It's Sunday. I really appreciate y'all, man. Uh, I'm Y'all stick around for like two minutes so I can talk to y'all after we end the live stream. You know what I'm saying? I can make sure I get this uh, video to y'all as well. Gotcha, um, gotcha. But yeah, man, I, I appreciate y'all once again. Make sure y'all go to their social medias, to their YouTube and to their Instagram. Make sure you subscribe and follow and, and support them. I'm sure they're going to be around. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting the hell up out of here. Until next time, y'all be easy.
Peace.